we've previously looked at how we can integrate uh, relatively complex integrals by using a process called integration by parts. And we saw in some of those examples that sometimes when we use integration by parts, we may have to use that process more than once to evaluate a particular integral. To do something called tabular, tabular integration, I want to introduce it by using an example. And tabular integration is a way that we can integrate a somewhat complex integral by using integration by parts, but this is going to be something where we would have to use integration by parts over and over again. Um, this is something we might want to use if we had to use integration by parts more than once or twice. So this example here, we can see that integration by parts is something that's going to work for us because we can let our u equal um, x cubed here, and so we would let u equal x cubed, and so du would be 3x squared, but then our resulting integral is going to have a 3x squared in it. So we would have to repeat the process and let our next u equal x squared, and so our next du is going to be 2x. We would end up with a 2x in our next integral, and so we would have to use the process again, and we would get another u of x, and du then would be dx. And, and finally, we would be able to complete the process. So we would have to use integration by parts at least three times here to evaluate this integral. So let's go ahead and see how we might do that. Um, so if we let u equal x cubed, uh, that would leave dv to be cosine of x times dx. And so du is going to be 3x squared dx, and v is going to be the sine of x. So using our integration by parts formula, this, uh, this f of x here, this integral, is going to be x cubed times the sine of x minus the integral of sine of x times 3x squared. And so then we'll repeat the process for... Uh, for our integral here. And so we'll let u equal 3x squared. Um, and you'll notice here that we have 3x squared was the derivative of our original u. Um, so we'll just call that our, uh, our new u. And then when we integrated our dv, we got the sine of x. And we're going to let dv, our new dv, equal the sine of x times dx. Um, and you can see here where we might start repeating uh, our use of what we end up with after each step. So now our derivative of our new u is going to be 6x, and I'm going to denote that, that with a prime um, so that we can take care of our notation here. Uh, rather than saying du equals 3x squared dx, I'll just say u prime equals 3x squared, um, and we'll remember that since we're taking a derivative, we'll multiply that by dx. And we'll take the derivative, or we'll say that our new dv is a sine of x dx, um, and so that integral right there, and I'm, I'm excluding the x cubed times sine of x part here, and I'm just evaluating this integral, is going to be negative 3x squared times a cosine of x, that's our u times our v, um, minus the integral of negative cosine of x times 6 of x, 6x dx, um, and that's our v times du. Um, we end up with a simpler integral, but we still have to use integration by parts there, so we'll repeat that process again. Uh, so when we differentiate our 6x, which is going to be our new u, we'll get 6. Um, and when we integrate our new dv, which is going to be our old v, um, we get negative sine of x. And so this integral right here, and again we're going to exclude this and just look at the integral, that integral is going to be our new u times v minus the integral of negative sine of x times 6 dx. Now, this is an integral that we know how to evaluate, but we'll go ahead and complete this process here until completion. Um, so we'll use integration by parts here, even though it's not totally necessary. And so the fourth integral of u now is going to be 0, and our next v is going to be cosine of x. And so this integral right here is going to be 6 cosine of x minus the integral of cosine of x times 0 dx. And notice this 0 here is going to make this whole term here 0, and we get the 6 cosine of x that we would have gotten otherwise without using the integration by parts. Now, to get our answer for f of x, we're going to have to combine all of this. Um, so we'll go term by term here. f of x is going to equal, well, first of all, we have that x cubed sine of x, then we need to subtract this integral. Um, we know that that integral is equal to this, so we'll distribute that negative, and so we're going to have a plus 3x squared cosine of x, plus this integral right here, remember this minus the integral, um, 
change to a positive when we distribute this negative here. Um, so we're going to get the next term right there, negative 6x sine of x. And then we're going to subtract uh, this integral here. And so we'll distribute that negative. And so we get minus 6 cosine of x. And like I said before, this integral is going to be 0 because we're integrating 0. Um, but it is an indefinite integral, so it's going to be 0 plus some constant. So we need our plus c, our, our plus um, the integral or the constant of integration. Now, this is a fairly complex process. Um, it, it's perfectly legitimate, and this will give us the answer, but we want to simplify this process. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to eliminate all this work over here on the left, and we're going to look at how we can use what we did over here to go straight to the answer without all of this work here. So if we look at our answer here, we have x cubed times the sine of x. And over here, I see an x cubed times the sine of x. So our first term comes from those two. And we can see that as we move down here, our next term is 3x squared, sorry, um, is 3x squared times cosine of x. Um, now we have negative cosine of x here, but we'll, we'll ignore sines for now. So we get 3x squared cosine of x, 6x times the sine of x, which we see the 6x times the sine of x here and 6 cosine of x, which we see the 6 cosine of x here. Um, and so our answer here comes by multiplying these diagonals here. Um, so we can take our initial u times our initial v, um, and then our next u times our next v, and our next u times our next v, and our next u times our next v. Now, looking at what's happening here with the signs, we can see that this x cubed times sine of x uh, isn't changing, but then when we have the 3x squared times the negative cosine of x, it's going to change to a positive. Um, then the 6x times the negative sine of x, that doesn't change, and the 6 times the cosine of x, that changes to a negative. So the signs are alternating. So when we're doing this process, we can choose our u and choose our dv, and differentiate u as many times as we need to until we get to zero and integrate our dv uh, the same number of times and then just multiply each u times the corresponding v um, and alternate our signs plus minus plus minus in this case. So reworking this problem using the process called tabular integration here um, we're going to choose a u and take derivatives of it until we get to zero and we're going to choose the dv then uh, which is left, but we want to integrate that over and over again. Um, just like when we integrate by parts, we want to choose a u that's going to reduce. Um, eventually we want this u to reduce to zero as we differentiate over and over again. And we want a dv that's not going to get more complex as we go. Um, so when we choose our u, we're going to choose x cubed, and so we get derivatives of 3x squared, 6x, 6, and 0. And then we choose dv to be cosine of x, and we integrate that to get sine of x, negative cosine of x, negative sine of x, and cosine of x. And then we just match them up, um, and we alternate signs starting with a positive. And so it's pretty straightforward from here to get our answer. We take x cubed times the sine of x to get our first term. Then we subtract 3x squared times negative cosine of x. Now those two negatives are going to cancel out and make a positive. So we get plus 3x squared cosine of x. Then we add 6x times the opposite of sine of x, um, which is actually going to be subtraction then, minus 6x sine of x. And then we subtract 6 times the cosine of x. And we can't forget here, since we're doing an indefinite integral, we have to add our constant of integration. So we've got our plus c here, and we get the same answer in much, much less work. This is a process that we'll want to use anytime we have to use integration by parts. And really, it's, it's, it's probably simpler to use this when we use integration by parts more than once.